everyone, welcome back to Photo Bite. I'm Josh, this is Rob, and today we're setting up to shoot a scene in our brand new studio space whilst testing the new SL100 by Video Light from Godox. In this shoot, we're making an entry level or indie virtual set that's made up of a fairly accessible collection of tools, which we'll go through in a minute. The scene we're shooting today is within a vast sci-fi environment. As this is a short, slow and relatively dark scene, we can rely on some basic technical elements whilst using a large green screen behind us. Here we go. Boom. This gives us the opportunity to test the pair of SL100 by video lights that we have recently received from Godox. If you're not familiar with this form of shooting, don't worry, you're not alone. The main difference between a static green screen shoot and what we're doing here today is that we're tracking our cameras in the space using a HTC VR kit. This gives us the ability to move the camera around, producing a realistic parallax of our subject within the scene. So the plan in this scene is pretty simple. We're literally gonna have Rob walk up this street here and go and push a button on the vending machine with a couple of different takes, a couple of different shots, a couple of different angles, maybe a front on face angle from the vending machine's point of view. It's just like a simple proof of concept really. And then a bit of post-production where we can add a little bit of extra grading and get the key maybe a little bit better in bits and pieces. And we should have a really quite nice scene. We're gonna add some extra sounds and ambient effects, maybe a few extra animations or two. And uh, that'll be our scene really. So let's get cracking. We've used the Vive trackers to actually position the lights. So we've told the trackers where the lights are and then put those lights in the scene for a, a little bit more added realism. And so we can almost see in that shot there, if we flip, flip between the two, you can almost see our light is pretty much in the same position that light is up there, that street light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off our scene where I'm gonna start off up in space and we can see all these amazing things. In our studio here, you can just see the, see the lights on the racking in the background. So I'm gonna pan this down. Rob, if you want to walk along quite nice and close to the wall and then walk along towards our vending machine. Yeah. And that's our scene for that bit. So we're going to get a couple of close up. So Rob, if you could pop back over here again. So what we do is we set the camera and the computer to basically know which lens we're using. So this is a full frame camera and we're using this lens at 28 millimeter. It's the Tamron lens on this one. So Rob's pop that into the computer so we can get the right kind of perspectives. And we could even try and get some handheld shots in this, but we do have limitations with the Vive trackers because if we move this too quickly, you can see quite a sharp jarring effect. So as I move it back and forward, you can see there's ever so slightly amount of drift or a bit of stutter where the camera is not quite matched up to the images in Unreal Engine and the trackers. Hold up, disembodied voice of Rob from the future here. Let me explain this a little better. Now we do plan on making more virtual production content in the future, where we dive more into how all this works, but I understand some of you might not know what the hell we are talking about right now. So here's a rough explanation. When talking about virtual production, there are three main elements. The camera, the real-time CG environment, usually a video game engine, in our case we're using Unreal Engine, and a tracking solution, which can range from a consumer gaming VR setup, like the Vive we're using here, up to a full-blown motion capture rig, kind of like what you were seeing Andy Circus running around in, in the Planet of the Apes. The super indie setup we're showing today is close to one of the cheapest and most accessible setups for those who want to try it, none of which is very specialist. The camera is a pretty standard Sony A7S Mark II, whose HDMI feed is being fed into my gaming PC through a capture card running Unreal Engine. Then, with a simple chroma key, it can be overlaid onto our virtual scene. 
We then use the Vive to get positional data to tell us where the camera is in 3D space to transfer that same motion onto the virtual camera, giving us a real-time view of myself standing, walking and acting my way around this cyberpunk world. All these elements have their pros and cons however. The camera we're using does not allow for genlock for example, as one way to mitigate latency and inconsistencies between real footage and the Unreal CG scene is to lock the engine to draw frames at the exact same time as every frame is captured in camera. The HTC Vive we're using is much the same. It is an amazing piece of kit for several reasons. One, it's cheap and accessible. Now, some of you might say an expensive VR gaming kit is not cheap, but compared to traditional motion capture setups, which cost thousands, it is very affordable. Plus, if you're just tracking cameras and not using the VR, you can get away with just purchasing a single tracking puck and some base stations and away you go. Two, the HTC Vive is room scale. This means it tracks outside in. Placing the base stations at the edges of your tracking area, it triangulates the tracking puck using infrared into a consistent real world space. Meaning no matter where you move the camera in the scene, it should always know where it is. As opposed to less accurate solutions that use inside out tracking, they either use cameras or LiDAR sensors to estimate the environment where if it ever loses tracking, it could place the camera into a random location when tracking resumes, which is not ideal for virtual production. But the Vive does have its limits. In the end, this VR gaming setup was not really intended to be used like this. The main one being the Vive pings the tracking pucks at its own pace. And right now, at least, there's no way to override this and gen lock it to the camera. Just like I mentioned earlier with the camera syncing issues that cause latency weirdness and jitter in your final result. Hold up. Ooh, fourth wall break in a fourth wall break. Anyway, HTC just announced as we were releasing this video, the HTC Vive Mars kit, which looks to add genlock, time code, lens encoding, all sorts to the Vive setup, really bringing it in line with other tracking solutions. Now you're gonna have to spend quite a bit extra money on it and it is only in the prototype phase at the moment, but it is coming. I'm sure we'll cover it in a future video in more detail, but I thought I'd just mention it. To get around these issues a little bit in our shoot, however, we decided to record the motion data and render out the scenes later, as we can apply smoothing and other techniques in editing after the fact to achieve a better overall sync of our footage. But on the day, it's good enough to get a really cool visualization, which can really help you figure out your lighting, camera positioning, and motion on the day. Now all that is cleared up, back to Josh in the studio. The importance of light in any form of virtual production or any set for that matter cannot be underestimated. When using LED panels, techniques for lighting are a little bit different to those when shooting against a green screen. Essentially, the main difference between the two scenarios is that you're shooting in camera in real time with an LED volume versus using your virtual environment as a reference for your lighting so you're not locked down as much and it can be adjusted in post with green screen production. The scene we're shooting today is within a vast sci-fi environment city and it gives us the perfect opportunity to test this big green screen and the new Godox lights. It's important to throw as much even light onto the green screen as possible. The bigger and cleaner your wash of light on the backdrop, the less work that you have to do in post cleaning up later on. These lights are really quite straightforward in many ways. They're brighter than the old Godoxes we've shot with before and have a very high CRI TLCI rating. This makes for pretty accurate color rendering and given they are also bicolor with a temperature range from 2800K to 6500K, they're really versatile and will work into a more complex set with other lights pretty easily. It does feature a number of really surprising additions. For a bicolor light to have effects as well, so you can have your fireworks, candle lights, um, you can have a, a fire glow, you can have bad TV, bad sign, broken light. There's a number of different um, effects you can have in this, which is really, really interesting and really, really nice to have. Um, it has an app this time around, so we can set up a studio mode within our app, um, controlling the lights in a numerous different ways, including the effects as well. At 100%, this puts out just over 31,000 lux. 
and I find myself not even needing to put these up to 100% for everything. And we're using one of these, which is just up here, to light up this entire green screen behind us for our test shoot today. Godox have really stepped up their game with the build quality of these lights. They are made out of plastic, but they do use really high quality feeling materials, which are quite strong, but also remain quite light. That makes hoisting these up on our C-stands with our big diffusers a lot less scary. And at the time of recording, you can pick one of these up for yourself for just under 200 pounds. So there they are, the SL100 by Video Lights from Godox. It's important to say that this video is not sponsored by Godox. Although we have been sent the lights to try and test them out, we're not affiliated or have been paid by the brand at all. Ultimately, we're really pleased with the results we've managed here today. Um, it's been a real test of basic virtual production workflow and although there are real limitations in producing virtual scenes with an indie setup such as this, it's definitely capable of shooting scenes that would otherwise be unachievable. I mean, how difficult and expensive would it be to shoot this scene on a real physical set? We've really dialed back what equipment we've got here today to see what we could do with a more indie minimalist kind of setup which is largely accessible that said we will be demonstrating a broader range of equipment workflows and results within the awesome world of virtual production as we develop this series on our channel the possibilities for filmmakers within this space are truly exciting so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell for more thanks again for godox for the loan of the new sl 100 by video lights and roll the final result. Here you go.